Imagine the universe, a small planet. On this planet, a tiny little country. In this country, millions and millions of people. One of them, me. Who am I with all my dreams? A UN peace soldier in the Sudan once gave me the most beautiful definition of a dream. He said, a real dream is the same for anybody on this planet. A real dream doesn't matter if you're a millionaire or a homeless person. A real dream is something which hovers on your horizon, and you know that if you try really hard, stay persistent, keep your sense of humor, find help, get lucky, that maybe, maybe this one dream you have is possible. So he said, a real dream challenges you to become the best version of yourself. As a young actress and theater maker, age 24, I created an adventure story about dreams. A journey of a girl on a tractor. A journey to the end of the world and back. But what is the end of the world? I thought, if I were a child, I would say, the end of the world, the end of the world, that's the South Pole! That sounds like going to the moon on a tractor, but maybe it is possible. And as an adult, I immediately thought, the end of the world, that's a famine area, a country at war, a place where people lose hope, that's the end of the world. Both voices inside me said, go. What if I get on a tractor and start traveling from the Netherlands all the way down to the South Pole? I'll probably come through many places, which as an adult you could call the end of the world. And I thought of Kosovo, Sudan, northern Kenya, famine area, northern Uganda, child soldiers. And I thought, I'll get on this tractor with my open mind, my curiosity, the way children still have it, and which is something so worthwhile to keep while growing up. I'll get on that tractor and start traveling all the way down to the South Pole, and on my way, I'll look for inspiring people, stories, initiatives that somehow prove that the end of the world doesn't exist, because you can always find someone who doesn't give up hope, who keeps trying, and this way inspires others. If there's one story I hope to tell, it is this story. And maybe I shouldn't act it out in theater. Maybe I should just do it. When I told my grandmother about my plan, she said, this, I'll not survive, I'll die. Before I started preparing this seemingly impossible journey, everybody I told about my plans confronted me with my own and their biggest fears. Even a taxi driver on a casual Friday afternoon, when I told him about my plans, described to me in great detail how I would be lured, abused and raped if I would put this story into reality. But I know about reality. When I was 18 years old, I was raped. So, I know. But if you live, you can't lock yourself up in your house Close yourself down from living your life because of fear. Even my grandmother eventually realized whatever you do to be safe, you can also be run over by a tram in Amsterdam. I learned that when you start preparing your dream's realization, it is important to find people who know from experience about reality. And just know that in reality, the positive feedback you may seek most likely will only come when your dream is in the process of being realized, not before. June 2005, I drove my tractor to the island of Terschelling in the north of Holland, and there I played the theater performance I had created for this journey. A theater performance as a present to the people I would meet while traveling. This way, I could communicate about dreams and doing in this performance, I invited people to write down their dreams, their wishes. 
And these dreams would travel with me on the back of my tractor all the way to the end of the world, the South Pole, the last day of the International Theatre Festival, Ural, Unterschelling. After my last performance, I literally drove out of the theatre performance into reality and started my journey. Day two, out of Holland, by accident, I drove onto the highway around Antwerp. The orange highway sign was covered with orange plastics, and suddenly I found myself driving on a four-lane highway. Cars started overtaking me with 120 kilometers per hour. My 30-year-old tractor had a maximum speed of 20 kilometers per hour. I felt like a demented old farmer taking the wrong turn. Right before the exit, side, uh, exit, exit sign, I was caught by the highway police and taken into custody. For two and a half weeks, I was stuck in Belgium. And from Canada, New Zealand, Germany, Belgium, France, the Netherlands, camera crews came by, radio stations, phones, photographers came, because they all wanted to hear this joke of a Dutch girl wanting to go to the South Pole on a tractor, but getting stuck in Belgium. I finally managed to overcome bureaucracy, got myself some Belgium number plates along the line, and I continued my journey, and I thought, if this is the beginning of my adventure, then what lies ahead of me? <laughs> In the Balkans, former Yugoslavia, I was confronted with the harsh reality of life on our planet, with people living in a post-war country. How would they react to this happy tractor girl talking about dreams? I arrived in a country anyone could easily go on holiday to. Beautiful mountains rising from the sea, lovely villages, smiling people at the side of the road. When I looked closer, I saw remnants of the war. Buildings that hadn't been renovated, they were all filled with gun holes, memories, documents to that war. Under the surface, there were many stories, and people were eager to tell them. I was invited by the War Child organization to play my theater performance at various locations, one of them a youth prison in Kosovo, with youngsters that had committed crimes during the war, but there were also victims of that same war. The prison guards prepared me for a rough ride, and I had to play my theater performance in a high-security setting. But while playing, these youngsters and their guards seemed to understand the necessity, something about this story, when I started collecting their dreams, it fell completely silent. During the years that followed, while traveling, I kept hearing from the prison director, a strong woman who shared with me the questions from her prisoners. Where is the tractor girl now? What adventures has she been through? Are our dreams still traveling with her? Has she made it to the South Pole? I can tell you thousands of stories I've traveled for three years and eight months, over 38,000 kilometers through 22 countries with a maximum speed of 20 kilometers per hour. And I've always been safe. Not a mango was stolen from my tractor. And my curiosity, my openness, ignited friendly responses and curiosity a beautiful contact with the world around me. Today, I believe that if you travel through life with an open mind, your curiosity, giving respect to people, and you may always ask to return the favor, you can truly get to the end of the world and back and be safe. Sometimes my journey felt like a quest that would never end. Girl drives away into the distance, never to be heard of again. I'm waiting for the movie. <laughs> the day I started this journey, I was 27 years old, and that day it hit me. I was about to become 32. When I arrived in Cape Town, it was the most beautiful day of my life. The tractor girl was escorted by police cars and Harley Davidsons. And again, I did something wrong. I followed the wrong car, took the wrong turn, and suddenly I ended up on a Hollywood film set ruining their shot. A big American Michael Moore-like film director came fiercely walking towards me, hands in the air, and I thought, will this be the very first time someone is going to seriously shout at me? 
hands in the air, he yelled, wonderful, marvelous. Have you already sold your film rights? Come here, come here, sit down, you want a cup of coffee? A friendly response. Just like the hookers in the red light district in Amsterdam, the secret police in the Sudan, the beautiful people in the streets talking about peace, Wangari Mathai, the first African woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize, the, the pregnant woman who nearly had a baby on my tractor, the soldiers in the famine of northern Kenya, the people that gave me a jump start over the equator, rats that de can detect mines and TB, the Antarctic mechanic who gave me the, safe, the GPS coordinates of a safe route all the way to the South Pole, and who promised me, if need be, I'll pull you the last little stretch. The Ethiopian girl who, without any means, and through a lot of, with a lot of inventiveness, created this project that helped so many street kids in her area. The hunger project in Malawi that proved that if people are inspired to start working together, they can truly be empowered to build up their own existence away from poverty. I arrived on the Cape of Good Hope with thousands of dreams in the back of my tractor. Right now, I'm in the process of realizing the final leg of my story, a South Pole all the way to the South Pole by tractor. I have four years of film material and beautiful stories that deserve to be shared. My aim is to create a children's book-like ending to this beautiful adventure story and to build a sorry, and to build a snowman on the South Pole with the dreams of the world in its belly. My wish is that this story, these stories, will travel back into the world, and if there's one person inspired to think out there, in this room, inspired to think, their dream has a chance. Their hope for life, for the world, has a chance in succeeding, then my story is worthwhile. If a girl can drive a tractor all the way to the South Pole and back and be safe, then also your dream can be possible. Life is an adventure. Do it!